Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everyone Hope you guys are doing well Welcome to another episode of Simple Tafsir In this episode we're going to be looking at Surah Al-Mutaffifin The Fraudsters Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah the surah talks about the condition of people in respect to how they buy and sell. And it also talks about the situation that people are going to find themselves in the hereafter. The people who make it, what their condition is going to be, and the people who don't make it, what their situation is going to be. And this serves as a warning to those individuals who shortchange one another and they reject the truth. And it also comforts the believers who might be weak and mocked, telling them that the end result is going to be for them. The victory is going to be for them at the end. <laughs> Destruction and loss be for those who short change and don't give full measure. They are the ones who when they measure for themselves from others, they take their full right without any reduction. But when they measure or weigh for people, they reduce the measurement and weight. And this was the practice of the people of Medina before the Prophet ﷺ migrated there. Do these people who do this evil act not know that they will be resurrected before Allah? For the reckoning and recompense on a day that is great because of the trials and horrors it contains. The day when people will stand before the Lord of all creation for the reckoning. The matter is not as you thought. You thought that there is not going to be any resurrection after death. The book of the wicked people from amongst the disbelievers and hypocrites will be in loss in the lower earth. O oh Messenger, what will tell you what the Sijin is? Their deeds are written in their book and it will not go anywhere. There will be no increase and no decrease either. Destruction and loss on that day will be for those who deny. Those who deny the day of judgment in which Allah will give His servants the reward of the actions they did in the world. None denies that day except every person who transgresses Allah's limits and commits abundant sins. When the verses that Allah revealed to His messengers are recited to them, they say these are the stories of earlier nations and are not from Allah. The matter is not as these people thought. Instead, the sins they used to commit has dominated and covered their minds and hearts and prevented them from seeing the truth with their hearts. (laughs) 
indeed they will be prevented from seeing their Lord on the day of judgment. Then they will enter the fire to suffer from its heat. Then on the day of judgment it will be said to them in rebuke and censure. This punishment that you received is what you used to deny in the world when your messenger told you about it. The matter is not as you thought that there will be no reckoning. The book of the people of obedience will be in Illiyun. O Messenger, what will tell you about what Illiyun is? Their deeds are written in this book and will not vanish, nor will there be any increase or decrease in it. This book is witnessed by all the angels that are close to Allah from each heaven. Those who do plenty of good deeds will be in everlasting bliss on the day of judgment. On decorated couches looking at their Lord and at everything delightful and pleasing to their souls. If you see them, you will see in their faces the effect of luxury, in their beauty and splendor. Their servants will give them wine from sealed containers to drink. It will give off the fragrance of musk until its very end. For this amazing reward, the people should compete by doing what pleases Allah and leaving what angers Him. This sealed drink will be mixed from the spring of Tasneem. This is a spring in the highest part of paradise, from which those who are close to Allah will drink purely and the rest of the believers will drink from it mixed with other drinks. Those who committed wrong because of the disbelief that they had, they used to mock and laugh at those who had faith. When they pass by the believers, they would wink at one another in ridicule and amusement. When they return to their families, they would go back happy with their acts of disbelief and ridicule of the believers. When they saw the Muslims, they would say, These people are astray from the path of truth as they abandoned the religion of their forefathers. Allah did not appoint them as guardians over the believers so that they could make this statement. On the day of judgment, those who had faith will be the ones laughing at the disbelievers as the disbelievers used to laugh at them in this world. On 
On decorated couches, they will look at the everlasting bliss that Allah has prepared for them. <laughs> the disbelievers have been given the humiliating punishment because of the actions they did in the world. If we look at the state of the world today, we see that the world is moving in a very secular direction. And this is also affecting us as Muslims, where religion is confined to the home, and outside the home people can do whatever they want. But the reality is that Islam is a complete way of life. This mindfulness of Allah is not only restricted to when we worship Him, but the reality is that a Muslim is always in the state of worship because they are always mindful of Allah. And this mindfulness extends to every single situation. When we're at home, when we're at work, when we're doing business, when we're at school, and during our ibadah especially. And we see here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rebuking these individuals for shortchanging people. And telling us that they do this because they're not aware, they're not mindful of Allah, and they don't believe in the hereafter. So as Muslims, we should be mindful of Allah in every situation to the best of our ability. And we might notice that when we're on this journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we might experience spiritual growth. But then sometimes we might notice that we lose this concentration, we lose the khushu that we once used to have. And this is not always the case, but many times if we dig deep, we can usually track it back to a certain sin we might have committed. And sins have negative consequences. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here that Kalla balrana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun It's not as they thought, it's because of the sins that they used to commit that sealed and covered their hearts. So the sins are displeasing to Allah and it can be an obstacle in our path towards Him. It can remove the khushu that we used to have and we can get that khushu back but we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His forgiveness. The Prophet ﷺ told us in a sound hadith that when a believer commits a sin, a black spot appears on his heart. And if he repents and gives up that sin and seeks forgiveness from Allah, his heart will be polished. But if the sin increases, the black spots increase as well. That is the ran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his book. So that is why it is extremely important for us as believers that we are constantly seeking forgiveness from Allah. And the more istighfar we do and the stronger our sincerity to Allah and our repentance is, the stronger the effect it will have on our hearts. Allah also tells us in this surah about the habits of the people of falsehood. From it is that they mock the believers, they look down on the believers. And we as Muslims should not feel bad when people laugh at us and make fun of us and talk bad to us. But we should derive confidence from this surah. Because this was the situation before and is going to continue like this. And we should know that we are upon the truth and where the truth leads. So based on these three points, we should look at ourselves and see, does my Islam extend to every situation? Am I mindful of Allah in every situation? Whether I'm outside or inside or at work or at school or wherever I might be. Am I mindful of Allah? And we should make istighfar a regular part of our routine. Not just regular, but something that we're constantly doing. Because we all commit sins, we all make mistakes. And the way to get rid of these mistakes is by seeking constant forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should be confident that we are Muslims. And we should be grateful to Allah that He chose us to be Muslims. Because Allah only gives faith to those individuals that He loves. And this should be a source of confidence for us. And no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we should always know that Allah is with us and we stay patient, seeking His pleasure, so that we can be in heaven enjoying the everlasting bliss that Allah has prepared for the believers. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi